Hello, welcome back to Through the Trap Door. I'm Emily. And I'm Katie. And this is our podcast where we read you Harry Potter fan fiction. And get attacked by dogs. Yes. <laughs> Today's not so bad because Pepper's already laying on the couch. And hopefully she stays nice and calm, otherwise she's going to rip my headphones right off my head. Yes. And I have to sit at a weird angle on the couch <laughs> because she's sitting here. But she's calm. So. We'll take calm. Priorities. Priorities, exactly. Do you have any announcements or things you want to talk about? I'm drinking blackberry wine from Stagger Unicorn because I can. I'm jealous. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm really, I really am sorry. I wish I could share with you. But you are growing a tiny, tiny human for me to be the auntie of, yes. so, sorry. I'm also eating a bunch of Halloween candy. Yes, I asked her if she wanted any candy, and she's like, oh, what do you have? And I pulled out this giant bag of candy, and she's like, oh, just bring the whole bag, just bring the whole thing. Yep. So if you hear rattling, it's just Katie. I'm going to try to be nice and, and only open the candy when it's not super rattly and try to eat away from the microphone because this is not an ASMR podcast where we eat food. Nope, you just get dog noises. Yep. And our voices. Uh (laughs) Uh-huh. Our rants. Yep. Speaking of rants, I started listening to Goblet of Wine recently. Oh my god, I need to. Which is amazing. Uh, But, you know, because I just started listening to it, I was only on episode four or five or whatever today. Uh, And they started talking about Slytherins and how they kind of see them as having their own kind of loyalty. Like how Hufflepuffs have loyalty, but they're loyal to anybody. Right. But a Slytherin, you really have to get to know the person. But once you do, you're truly loyal to that person. And I was thinking about it. I'm like, oh my God, that's like the best description of myself ever. You know? I 100% agree with it. Because it's true. Yeah. Because we were like, when we met, we were like, I was her manager, and we were like, oh yeah, well, we like each other, this is fine. And then all of a sudden, one day we got on the subject of the Duggars, which then somehow turned into Harry Potter, which has now turned into um the best friendship I think I've ever had. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> Fair. I, I really like that our friendship started... With us talking about the Duggars obsessively. Oh my god. Well, they had a scandal. I think it's really just we love scandal. That does seem accurate, yes. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's always scandal that drives the subject change. Yeah. Kind of like my obsession with um, the Bush people. Alaskan bush people. Oh my god! <laughs> I like how you knew. Like, you're just on that. <laughs> it's like my my horrible obsession, obsession too, with um, live PD. Yep. Mm-hmm. Why? Yep. It's, it's not quality television, but it's quality television. <laughs> but you're just so sucked into the drama of it. And you're like, why are you doing that? I always wonder, I'm like, why the hell are you running away? You're just, now you're definitely guilty. Because that's the thing, like, oh, this person has a taillight out, go to pull him over, they run. I'm like, bitch, he was just going to give you a ticket for your taillight. Like, if you had just pulled over and been like, oh my god, I'm so sorry, what was I doing wrong? And they were like, your taillight's out. You'd be like, oh my god, I'm so sorry, I didn't know. I'll go right to the auto parts store and buy a light bulb. Yeah, they usually be like, okay, like. I still have to give you a ticket. Like, here you go. All right, we should probably actually, like, do some Harry Potter thing. Lily couldn't pay attention in Arinthbasy. The professor was droning on about something or other, but all Lily could think about was her parents' letter. She had so much to think about. Should she go home for Christmas? Stay here? What would she get everybody for Christmas? This again! Bitch, we already know. You already have a very detailed list about what you want to get for everyone. Your siblings, your two sisters. And your brother. (sighs) Your brother loves magic. Your sisters don't. Your parents are like, whatever you want to do. You're going to get magical makeup and a piece of jewelry for your poor friend. And books for the boy with a normal name, Zach or something. 
Max? I don't remember. Max! Matt? Matt. I don't know. It, it was might have been Matt. It might have been Mike. I really, like, I really don't remember. <laughs> why did Mimi have to keep talking about James, Sirius, and Remus? For that matter, why did Mimi think that Lily had a crush on James? Why did James keep bugging her? Why was Melody so gaga over Sirius? Why had she agreed to help the mar- marauders with the stupid charm in the first place? By the end of Arithmacy, Lily had herself so worked up she was close to tears. She hurried to the Ravenclaw girls' dormitory and threw her books hastily on the bed, and she rushed back out just as quickly. Bitch, you are way too emotional. She's got a lot going on. First of all, Melody is so gaga over Sirius because he's hot. That's been well established in canon. Super hot. But he's also funny. He is. Which is like, uh... Like, I feel like I would have had a crush on young Sirius. Oh, totally! Hot, funny kid? Mm Mm-hmm. With lots of hair? Heck yeah! Yeah. Yeah. But he's still, like, nice and genuine and, like... Right. Yeah. Like, um, I, like, seriously, funny is the most important thing to me. Also, everyone thinks you have a crush on James, because you do. Because you do. James keeps bugging you because he also is in love with you. It's yes. Not, yes. You got way too emotional in arithmancy. You can cry about arithmancy, not about your problems. So not real problems. She had to get away, fast. She needed to go somewhere where she could think, and no one would bug her. The dormitory was out of the question. Mimi would come up and start blabbing about Remus and Sirius and James... She knew she was supposed to be going to MHQ, but if Mimi blabbing about Remus and Sirius and James was bad, seeing them in person was even worse. There was only one place she could think of to go to get away from everybody and everything, and she needed a broom to get there. Where are you going? Where is she going? That she, one, needs a broom. Two, can she fly? Three, where are you going? Lily walked out of the castle, not caring who saw her, and went to the broom shed, grabbing the most promising broom she could find. Lily shakily flew up into the air. She flew above the school and landed on the roof. From there, she could see all of the grounds and the forbidden forest stretching off into the distance. So you literally were just going onto the roof? I guess so. Why wouldn't you just go to the astronomy tower and look out the window? Yeah, that's where Harry goes. She wasn't sure where it ended or why it was there, but she knew there was a reason for its existence, if not just to protect another side of Hogwarts. Was she really contemplating why the Forbidden Forest exists? It's a forest! They should exist! Listen, she's... 15, she's got a lot of shit going on. Okay, fine, but I don't think I ever contemplated the reason why a forest was there at 15. I don't think I contemplate it now. (laughs) She set her broom down and magically bound it so it wouldn't roll off and leave her stranded. She sat down, brought her knees up to her chest, and put her head on them, willing all her troubles to just go away. When she lifted up her head, her mind seemed miraculously clear. The sky was incredibly blue. She couldn't see a cloud in it as her gaze drifted back over the grounds. The lake sparkled like diamonds in the sunlight. Lily sighed contently and wished she could stay right here forever. It was perfect. Just as she was thinking to herself that nothing could be better than feeling as at peace with the world as she was now, she suddenly felt a pang of sadness. Or maybe it was emptiness? No, it really wasn't either of those. It was longing. Longing? What was she longing for? Lily was suddenly confused. What was there that she could possibly want besides alone time? She had her friends, her family, her school. But as she looked over the grounds, she saw two seventh years kiss. (gasps) Oh! And she felt the pang again. She hugged her knees and chest tighter and looked at the couple with even more longing than before. Closing her eyes, Lily imagined herself as one of those two people, 
she had never had a boyfriend before, and though she'd kissed a couple guys, it was nothing special. She wanted it to be something special. Suddenly, a picture of James popped into her mind, and her eyes opened, upset. That was the problem, right there. People like James, with all those idiots running around the school, how was she ever supposed to find someone special? How was she going to find someone who understood her and loved her, that she cared about equally? It was impossible. She already knew pretty much all of the boys in her year, and she couldn't imagine falling in love with any of them. She supposed she'd have to wait until she was af- out of school to find anyone she really cared about. I'm going to be real with you. I went to high school with my husband. If you told 15-year-old me that I was going to marry him, I would have laughed in your face. She suddenly felt eyes watching her and twisted around to see James Potter on his broomstick looking at her. Her stomach fell. She turned back around with a stony expression on her face. Nobody would be able to tell. But despite her hard expression, she was just about to cry. Go away, she said bitterly. What's wrong, James asked, actually sounding concerned as he landed on the roof and got off his broom. Because he loves you. Lily looked over at him, ready to tell him off, but she stopped, words at the tip of her tongue. He looked very different. The sun was shining behind his head. The wind was blowing his hair. At that moment, Lily actually thought he looked, well, handsome. Her heart skipped and started beating faster. She tried to knock some sense into herself, but it wasn't happening. Her heart continued beating faster and faster, and she kept staring at him. James smiled at her. The smile was having a strange effect on her breathing and her legs, and she was afraid if she stood up, she would just fall right back down again. What was wrong with her? She felt like screaming, but she couldn't. Her throat had tightened, and she felt like she could barely speak, even if she tried. You're looking at me funny, James said, still smiling irresistibly. Irresistibly? What? Since when had James Potter been irresistible? Ha, yeah, right. Like, she's ever be attracted to James Potter. It was all this fresh air. It was starting to get to her. Immediately, all the strange feelings left. Oh, that's not how fresh air works, but okay. (laughs) That's not how feelings usually work either. (laughs) You, she said furiously. You are harder to get rid of than a popcorn kernel or a milk dud or something stuck in my teeth. What's a milk dud? A delicious candy. James asked, looking confused, a weird little grin on his face. It was not cute at all. Lily was relieved to notice. You don't know what a milk dud is? Are milk duds a thing in the UK? I don't know. Well, we know, like, freaking sports jerseys aren't a thing in the UK. We yeah. learned that from mm-hmm. the Fanatical Fix Goblet of Wine crossover. Yes. I'm sure they probably have something similar. It's probably just called something else. Maybe. Oh, it's got better chocolate on it, though, if they do have it. Mm. Because... British chocolate is fucking amazing. Yeah. You know, because they have laws that keep stupid chemicals and shit out of their stuff. That does help. Yeah. It's like, start recording again, oh no. (laughs) Alright, so we're back. We had a... Had a whole thing. Yeah. My pop filter fell off. We had to kick the dogs out. They ripped off Katie's headphones. It was a whole thing. It really was. All right, but we locked the dogs out. You would think that we would just learn at this point and start by locking them out, but no. We always try. They always start out okay. And then we're halfway through the recording and we have to lock them out. Yeah. Always. Yep. Your parents were wizards, weren't they? Yeah. I thought so. Lily nodded. So what's a milk dud? It's a muggle candy. It's chocolate. It's really chewy. It gets stuck in your teeth a lot. I think it's part caramel, too. You think? That's like... You think? That's why it's chewy. It's all chocolate and caramel. That's it. It's caramel with the thinnest layer of chocolate atop it. 
So it's literally just hunks of chewy caramel. I'm not really sure what else is in them. Nothing. Nothing else is in them, Lily. <sighs> Lily shrugged and smiled. I like them. <laughs> I just laugh when we're very passionate about milk. <laughs> we're very passionate about milk does, apparently. I don't think I can tell you the last time I ate one. I can. When I went to Toy Story 4 in theaters. <laughs> when I bought too many snacks. I feel like that's just like standard movie theater. Oh, I bought. Curly- <laughs> she, she had to set down her wine glass. <laughs> I bought curly French fries. I bought cinnamon pretzels. I bought milk duds. We got an icy. We got ice cream. That sounds delicious. It was great. Oh, I think we also got regular pretzels. Oh, we got nachos too. That's what we got. Yes. <laughs> oh. That sounds fantastic. And then I cried at Toy Story 4 because it was very sad. Mm. I haven't seen it yet. Oh my god, it's going to make you cry. Probably. James nodded. Why were you up here? I've been waiting for you. Lily sighed and looked back down at the lake. James sat down next to her. I couldn't come. I. She sighed again and dropped her head down by her legs. You what? James asked, reaching over and pushing Lily's hair behind her ear. Lily looked over at him, surprised. He was looking at her very seriously, and she was surprised to find herself looking just as seriously back. I had too much to think about. I, oh God, I'm so stressed you wouldn't even understand. James laughed sharply. Try me. What, your life as a prankster and Quidditch captain is so tough? She asked, expecting a smart remark like, Oh yes, dung bombs are more technical than you think. But she didn't get what she was expecting. Lily, do you know who my father is? James asked. And this time, it was him to look out at the lake. No, Lily said. Who is he? Katie is making a very weird face. I need to know where they're going with this. James just shook his head. I don't want to tell you. It's nothing embarrassing. It's just, you're not ashamed of him, are you? Lily asked, actually starting to feel sorry for him if he was. No, not at all. I'm very proud, but he, James sighed. His job takes a lot of responsibility and expects me to be just the same. I'm 15 and he expects me to act like I'm 45. I don't know if I'm ready for that. Who is your father? What does he do? Who is he? Why does he want you to act like a grown-ass adult at 15? Maybe he just wants you to stop, like, pranking people. Being a dick. Yes. Lily looked at him, blinking. This was a side of James she'd never seen before. In fact, there were a lot of sides of James that she'd bet she'd never seen before. He was not at all what she'd been expecting. I just want to be a 15-year-old boy while I'm still... Fifteen, you know? He said, smiling wryly at her. What fifteen-year-old has that insight? Lily gave a small smile. She had been thinking all he cared about was where he was going to pull his next prank, but she had just discovered he wasn't that simple. No one's that simple, Lily, she reminded herself. You of all people should know that. So what are your parents like? James asked, leaning back. Lily shrugged and started playing with the bottom of her robe. They're cool, she said. They're muggles, but they're really happy for me. Always interested in school, she sighed. She let her robes fall out of her hands. The letter was still bugging her. She was 15. You'd think she'd be able to make a simple decision like where to stay for Christmas. What's wrong? James asked, seeing the expression on Lily's face. This letter. My parents wrote me this letter and... uh, Lily groaned, burying her face in her hands. What'd the letter say? Lily sighed again and dug into her robes for the letter. She had been carrying it around with her. Now she couldn't believe she was going to share the letter with James. She hadn't even told Melody. James read the letter, so can't decide where to stay for Christmas, huh? It's stupid, I know. I just, I don't know why it's bugging me so much. It's not stupid, James said. It's hard to feel like you might be letting your parents down. I have to make that decision every year. This year I'm staying at Hogwarts. Well, that settles it then, Lily said matter-of-factly. 
What? James asked. I'm going home for Christmas, she declared, smiling at him. So all of her teeth showed. James laughed. Come on, let's go, James said, standing up. Lily groaned and stood, taking the charm off her broom, binding it to the roof. She looked over at the couple down by the lake and felt another pang in her heart. You know what? I'm not ready yet, Lily said. I still need some time to think. I need to be alone. Well, when you're ready, we'll be at MHQ waiting for you. Suddenly, Lily felt angry and bitter. She didn't know why, but looking at the couple was making her sick. And I'll be right up here, not caring, she said bitterly as James was about to fly away. She caught sight of his face. He looked hurt. Lily suddenly felt guilt. James, wait, she called after him. Standing up suddenly, she lost her balance for a moment and dropped her broom, windmilling her arms to keep herself from falling. A strong arm wrapped around her waist and pulled her onto a broom. James's. How did he know she was on the roof? I don't know. How did he think, like, oh, I'm going to go check the roof? It doesn't seem like a logical place to check. Maybe he was out quidditching and... But he was waiting for her at MHQ. I don't, I don't. All right. He's stalking her. Maybe he has the Marauder's map already. <gasps> I didn't think about that. Because we don't know when they made it. Oh, uh, fair point. Fair point. Fair point. Touche. Thanks, Lily breathed, her heart beating like a bass drum in her ears. Oh, bass drum, not a bass. <laughs> <laughs> it was not a fish drum. <laughs> Lily breathed, her heart beating like a bass drum in her ears. I'm taking you hostage, James whispered into her ear. It tickled, and she giggled, goosebumps springing up on her neck. When you were using bathroom, all I could think of was, like, oh, I have a fish commercial. Don't drop me, Lily whispered back. James got an evil grin on his face. He dipped the broom almost vertically and immediately righted again. Lily screamed. James laughed softly and wrapped his arms tighter around her. I won't let you fall, he promised. She felt safe, but she still didn't like hovering so many feet above the ground. She leaned back as far as she could and put her head on his shoulder, scrunching her eyes up tight. She heard James laugh again, but she didn't care. She thought she felt his lips brush her forehead and her eyes flew open. He wasn't even looking at her, just concentrating on flying to the ground. She must have imagined it. They landed and got off the broom. Now, off to MHQ, James said, turning back into his old self. Oh, goody, Lily muttered. Then she realized something. She had actually told him about the letter, and she didn't want to tell anybody else. James, about the letter, she began, but James cut her off. I won't tell anybody, he said. Lily almost smiled. You can't go home for Christmas, Melody cried, overreacting as usual. Really? Why? Lily asked calmly. What am I going to do without you? Lily shrugged. I don't know. Stay here at Hogwarts, please. Melody whined. Lily sighed. There she was, stuck again. I don't know, Melody. I... Lily trailed off, not knowing what to say. I promise I won't make you hang out with the marauders, Melody said. Please, she begged. Lily smiled and rolled her eyes, shaking her head. What am I going to do with you? Are you staying? After a moment of internal struggle, Lily spat out her answer. Okay, fine. Yay, now go sign up. Lily had hit almost every store in Hogsmeade, but she still hadn't gotten a present for James. She owled her parents this morning with her decision, which hadn't been easy. She had been shopping with Melody most of the day, but they split up for about an hour to buy presents for each other. You know what we should get James for Christmas? A kiss. Yes. Either Hershey or real. Yes. Or both. Or Milk Duds. Milk Duds! There we go. We just solved all of your life problems. I feel like I have to now go buy milk duds, but I feel like you can only buy them at the movie theater. You should be able to buy them at, like, a gas station for Hannaford. I know Market you basket. can, but I feel like you can only buy them at a movie theater. Oh, okay. 
Lily checked her watch. It was time to meet Melody and the three broomsticks. She hurried in, her cheeks rosy from the bitter wind blowing outside, and she looked around, taking off her hat. James and Sirius were at the bar, talking to a pretty waitress who was laughing. You're 15! They're in the UK! Still, don't hit on the pretty waitress, you're 15! Oh, I thought you meant they were sitting at the bar. No. They're hitting on the pretty waitress. I don't care about sitting at the bar. Also, they're, they're 15. They're hitting on the pretty waitress. Right! They're 15. They're hitting on the pretty waitress. I know, but they're 15. Why is she laughing? Oh, she wants a tip. <laughs> she doesn't want to make oh, it awkward. Oh, it's also the UK. They don't yeah. need tips in the UK. That's not a thing. No. It's not a cultural thing in the UK. But I'm sure she just doesn't want to make it awkward. Like, these students, like, I've been seeing them for at least two years. Like, I'm going to see them for at least another two years. Yeah, that's true. It's going to laugh. and They'll go away eventually. That's true. Remus and Peter were at a nearby table having a heated discussion about something. Mimi, Susie, and Matt. Matt! Had a table in the corner. They waved to her. She waved back but declined an invitation to join them. She finally spotted Melody in the center of the room. Really? Center of the room and you didn't notice her first? Seriously. How'd your shopping go? Melody asked as Lily sat down. Great, Lily replied, but I still don't have a present for James. A waitress came over and they ordered two butter beers and some cheese fries. Yes! Delicious choice. Oh my god, they're us. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Melody raised an eyebrow. James, since when are you buying presents for your enemies? Lily rolled her eyes. He's not exactly an enemy, Melody. Just extremely annoying. Besides, I told you I was buying presents for the Marauders. Yeah, but I didn't know James was included. I mean, according to you, James is worse than serious. Yeah, but I didn't know that included James. I mean, according to you, James is worse than Snape. Don't ever say that James is worse than Snape. I mean, James is bad, but he's not that bad. Melody laughed. Their food came and Melody pounced on the cheese fries. Lily took a few gulps of butterbeer and then set her mug down, still wondering what in the world to get for James. So do you have any idea of what you're going to get him? Melody asked, mouth still stuffed. A box, Lily said. Melody almost spat out the cheese fries. She swallowed quickly and started laughing, while at the same time half choking. Lily smiled and picked up a fry. Really, I have no idea, she said. Well, how much do you really know about him? Melody asked, drinking some butterbeer. Lily shrugged and bit off the end of a fry. Not much, she admitted. I know he's a prefect, he's a Gryffindor, he's a prankster, he's Quidditch captain, he doesn't bother to try at charms, he likes transfiguration, he hates Snape, he feels like his father puts too much pressure on him to be responsible. I feel like you know a lot about him. Melody froze. She had been nodding along as Lily had said all the things she really knew about James, but when she had gotten to the part about his father putting too much pressure, where had she had heard that? Melody didn't think she'd ever heard James say something about his father. She shrugged and left, let it slide. If Lily and James were getting close, she didn't have a problem with it. Well, none of that is really very good for picking out a Christmas present, unless you get him some Quidditch stuff or a Transfiguration book. Yeah, I thought about it, but it's just too boring. Well, I promised the Marauders I'd spend some time with them today because I'll be hanging out with you all of Christmas holidays. Well, you don't have to hang out with me exclusively, Lily said. Don't be silly. I don't care if you hang out with Sirius a lot. But you care if I hang out with James. I don't care if you hang out with James's whole family as long as you don't make me go with you. Melody rolled her eyes. Hey, I was the one who begged you to stay. I'm not going to desert you over Christmas. I'll see you later, okay? Good luck finding a present for James, she said, finishing her butterbeer, dropping some money on the table, gathering up her bags, and waving goodbye. She just did a whole lot of things. <laughs> That's a lot. Although, it definitely all made sense. It did. It was just a lot of things all at once. It was just like, okay, bye. <laughs> Bye. What are you doing? She's leaving. Bye. Also, why do why why do wizards only use coins? I don't know. That's something I've always had a problem with. But that has to be so heavy. So he oh, I don't know. 
Hermione's beaded bag. True. Maybe all money bags have that same kind of charm on them. True. I'm really surprised that they haven't come up with a system where, like, they can tell whose wand belongs to who. Like, they know. They can tell. Right. So why can't your wand connect to your Green Gods account? Right. And just be, like, your debit card. Yeah. Your debit wand. Apple Pay on my on my wand. Ho- Beep. Hot damn. Hold on. Hold on. Sirius says... In one of the books, almost 110% positive, that he buys the broom for Harry, in Harry's name, but says, make sure you take the money out of my vault, the serious black vault, the black vault. So there's got to be a way that you can go to the shopkeepers and be like, here's my vault, take the money from there. Probably. Though I wonder if, because I feel like goblins give no cares about wizards uh what if Sirius like owled his bank manager and was like yo this is Sirius I need you to buy the broom make it in Harry Potter's name mail it to him okay thanks bye maybe and then the goblin just would have like sent a messenger to buy the broom and mail it to Harry Questions mm-hmm. that I have for J.K. Rowling. <laughs> Why couldn't they just use their wands as like an Apple Pay system? It doesn't make sense. Where the hell are Lily's parents? Also that. You're telling me not one Muggle-born ever brought a pen? She has answered the pen question. She has? Yeah. Wizards are stuck in the same era as the Statute of Secrecy was signed. Okay, but you're telling me a Muggle-born didn't bring a pen? I don't know, maybe because it's Muggle shit it doesn't work? But it's electronics that don't work. I don't know! A pen has no electronics in it. Nobody brought a pencil either! On Goblet of Wine, they also talked about that, and they were like, you're telling me that Harry didn't just buy a suitcase? Like, why did he buy a trunk? Or Hermione, why did she buy a trunk and not just a suitcase? Wasn't a... I'm pretty sure a trunk is on the actual list, though. They said that it wasn't. Even if it was, why wouldn't you be like, okay, I see that you listed trunk here, but I've got the suitcase. Which fits all of my things. Yeah, but uh, does it fit all of your things? All your clothes for a year at school. Both cash, cash, because we know they have dress down, and your school robes. So you need casual clothes for a year, or at least until the holiday season is over. So let's just say two months worth of clothes. But they have house elves that do laundry. Oh, fair. So you need at least two weeks worth of clothes. Let's be real. Or I would still bring two months worth of clothes. I want to do too many of the same outfits as I wear the same outfit every week, but still. I was going to say, we literally see each other wearing the same, like, leggings every week. <laughs> I also haven't done laundry in two weeks, so my options are limited. <laughs> same. Um, so you need, let's just say you need at least two weeks worth of clothes. All of your damn school books, a fucking cauldron! Who decided that all students should bring a cauldron. Pewter, size one. I, I remember, but who decided that every student needed their own cauldron? You're telling me that this school doesn't have standard issued cauldrons for... And they do, because clearly they never brought their cauldron to class. It's kind of like the textbook thing all over again. Like, you're telling me that this school can't just invest in a standard set of textbooks that they hand to the student and say, welcome to potions class. Here's your textbook. Write your name in that shit. If you lose it, I'm going to find you. Right. Or like, buy this textbook. We will provide it for you. And it'll update every year with the class required text. That would be fantastic. So you need one book for every single subject. That you choose, but but every year it just updates on its own. But 
But the Hermione in me is like, no, I would want every textbook so I can go back and look. But then you'd like, I like, I don't know. But cauldron. That's why you need a trunk. You have a cauldron. I just, I have, I, feel, I just, I don't. I mean, they went on the run with a rucksack and a beaded bag, so, for a year, 400 pages of camping. I just, I have many questions about things. All right. So many. Lily waved back, finished her drink. She paid for the rest of it, left a tip, and resumed her shopping. Uh, well, this author's American. <laughs> there was something earlier that they said that I was like, oh, they're definitely American. Maybe it was the Milk Dud thing. I think that we said something last chapter, too. Yeah. On the outskirts by the bottom of the hill where the shrieking shack stood, she spotted a small shop she'd never really noticed before. Flitwick's. Really? Did he suddenly stop teaching, or is this just like his part-time weekend job? We know he's a champion dueler and the the charms teacher. Magical bags, boxes, wrapping paper, and containers. (laughs) All sizes. Bottomless, shape-shifting, shrinkable, expandable, musical, color-changing. I want a bottomless one. I just... (laughs) This list is amazing. I love the name. Flitwick. Magical bags, boxes, wrapping paper, and containers. Like, what What other container is there? You, I don't know. You gave me all of the containers. Why is wrapping paper listed? Well, I mean, like, I get it, but, like. The magic, wrapping paper is clearly the magical color cha- Also, all sizes. Bottomless shape-shifting. Shrinkable, expandable. Musical. I'm sorry, I read that as magical in my mind. Color changing. I want musical wrapping paper. Me too. And I want a bottomless container. Oh, all, always. Fit all my things in it. Well, okay, what kind of bottomless would you want it to be? Would you want it to be like a... You're able to just like reach in and always grab it? Yeah, like the Mary Poppins bag. Because I, I hate it when like you're watching a show or a movie and it's like bottomless but they're like fall inside digging for it no i want it to be like the mary poppins bag where you just go shoulder shoulder deep i'm sorry i was trying to do a visual she was thing. visual <laughs> shoulder deep into your bag and then you just pull out a goddamn coat rack you always need your traveling coat rack i honestly i would love to always have a coat rack on me always a place to put my bag and my coat Speaking of coat racks, I don't know if you noticed, but there's one behind the door when you come inside. Now you don't have to use the dining room chair if you don't want to. I know, but it's just a habit. Okay, that's fine. I saw it when I came in, and I just still have it. <laughs> that's fine. Just my, my coat right to the dining room table. It's fine. Just wanted to point out that there is an actual coat rack. <laughs> <laughs> one day I'll put it on there, and then that will become the habit. Eh. But for now? I'm not too concerned. It's not like it lives there. I know it's not like you live here and your coat's always on the chair it's you visit once a week and your coat's on the chair for a couple hours Lily laughed and pushed her way into the store so she was going to end up getting James a box after all can I help you a rather small wizard asked coming up to her she did a double take on him you you look like one of my professors she exclaimed professor Flitwick the wizard asked Lily nodded, and he smiled. That's my younger brother. Excellent at charms, you know. Our whole family is, really. I don't know why I gave him this weird accent. It's fine. I kind of here for it. Which is why we charmed all of these boxes and bags and opened a shop. <laughs> He's very passionate about that. I mean, charms. Lily smiled and looked around at the shelves and racks full of boxes and bags. So is there anything in particular you're looking for? I'm looking for a box, Lily said. No shit, you're in a box store. What kind? Bottomless, shape-shifting, color-changing, musical, a combination? A combination? Um, would you like to customize a box? Yes! That would be nice. How much? (laughs) It all depends, he says. They can range anywhere from five nuts to 15 galleons. 
Damn! Lily looked in her money purse and saw she still had five galleons, 17 sickles, and 12 nuts left. That would be enough to buy a box. I think I will, she said, and the wizard helping her got very excited. Well, if you're listening to this, he's been very excited from the beginning. It's like, yes, <laughs> we've made him excitable. Oh, wonderful, wonderful, he said, scurrying into the back room, where he brought out a very plain brown box. Come, come, over to the table, he said, walking over to a table, which had chairs on both sides, and he sat down in one, and Lily sat across from him. So is this for you, or will it be for someone else? Someone else. Would you like any engravings, a name on the box, initials, perhaps? How much? One nut per letter. Lily considered. A name, she decided. First or last? First, it's James. In gold or silver? Silver. Gold! He's a Gryffindor! Obviously. What if she also makes it green? But she's a Ravenclaw! But they hate Snape. Ah! (laughs) (laughs) Where would you like it? Lily pointed to the side of the box. How is it spelled? Lily told him. It's James. I'm sure he just wants to make sure. Maybe... Is there weird spellings of James? Maybe there's a W in it somewhere. I don't know. (laughs) Maybe it's spelled with a Z at the end. I challenge you now to name your child with a silent W. (laughs) (laughs) It could be in any of their names. It could be in their middle name. I don't care. (laughs) Silent W. (laughs) Silent W. (laughs) Yes, this is Jennifer. Yes, uh, it's spelled J E N W N E R. The W silent. <laughs> yeah, no, you don't say the W. <laughs> Why did you put it there? It was a dare. <laughs> dared me (laughs) could you imagine being a child growing up with that ma'am why is there a w in the middle of your name (laughs) don't ask my aunt dared my mother and she did it now there's a w in the middle of my name jennifer with a w (laughs) there's a caitlin on the internet i saw it her mother spelled caitlin with an eight, the le- the number eight in the middle of it. That's horrible. Yeah, I know. Choose your lettering, the wizard said, waving his hand, a display popping up in front of her. She chose a very basic block lettering. The wizard performed a charm, and five silver letters appeared on the box. Lily smiled. They looked nice, but the colors didn't match the rest of the box. We need to change the color. The wizard smiled. Would you like one color? Color changing? Color changing with limited colors? With patterns? Changing patterns? Patterns and colors to change at will? Or something else? Um, Lily's head was spinning. Would you like to hear them again? An explanation of each, perhaps? Explanation, please. Certainly, I can demonstrate each if you would like. Lily nodded. Oh, see, yeah, I want a demonstration. Very well. First, we have the one color option. You may choose any color you wish, but the box will stay that color forever. It will not fade. He demonstrated by turning the box blue. That's cool. You can have color effects on it as well as you wish. Glossy, metallic, pastel, etc. Lily nodded. You can also choose to create a pattern that will stay permanently. Colors for this option will be one sickle, and the patterns are two sickles, two nuts. You can have constantly changing colors on the box. You can have unlimited colors or a specific number of colors for the box to change to. There are a number of different transitions to choose from, such as fading, melting, glowing from the inside out, etc. You can also have a certain set of colors or an unlimited range of colors which the owner can change any time the exact same is true for the pattern although i find the changing patterns much more interesting mr flitwick demonstrated he was right unlimited colors are five sickles limited up to 12 is three sickles unlimited are seven limited up to six is five sickles 
Or you could have the box enchanted to change from patterns to solid colors, either on its own or at the will of the owner. This option is one galleon. Or you could suggest something of your own, because I didn't just give you 75,000 options. I feel like you covered all of the options. What would be my option on my own? Could I have the box be both changing unlimited patterns and changing unlimited colors, but with the option of choosing whether or not you want the pattern or a solid color? Yes, you could. How much would that be? Two galleons. Would you like that? She better let two galleons for James, but she nodded anyway. I'd like that. Mr. Fitlick took a few minutes and performed several complicated charms on the box. Are you sure that this is what you want before I place an irreversible charm on it? I'm sure, she said after a few seconds of hesitation. Mr. Fluick put the charm on. All right, now we can discuss depth, size, shape, etc. We have bottomless, shape shifting, shrinking, expanding. What's shrinking and expanding? It can shrink or expand to any size or dimension within limits. The smallest dimension would be one centimeter in all directions. The largest would be 10 meters in all directions. Damn! That sounds good. Mr. Flitwick nodded and put the charm on. He explained how to control the dimensions of the box. Would you like a musical box? Lily considered for a flitting moment. To get James a really pretty box with a really annoying song, but then decided it was stupid. No, she said. Mr. Flitwick nodded. Almost done. Would you like anti-theft, alarm, anti-loss, or other charms? What's anti-loss? Lily asked, curious. She'd never heard of it before. If the box is left in a certain place designated by the owner and is removed from that place by anyone but the owner, it will return to that place automatically after 48 hours. If it is left alone and out of place for a week, it will return to its proper place. That is fantastic. I want that on everything I own. Just think about, like, the transporting abilities, because, like, what if you put shit inside your box? And then you're like, okay, I don't feel like transporting it myself. Hey, can you pick this up and just put it on that counter? In two days, it'll be gone. Yeah. (gasps) Yep. The designated place can easily be determined by the owner using a simple placement charm. Do you know how to perform one? Yes. I thought you would. And your friend would as well? Yes. How do you like the sound of an anti-loss? I like it. How much for that? Four sickles. I'll take that, and Mr. Flowick put the charm on. Is there anything you'd like? No, thanks. That will be two galleons, seven sickles, and five nuts. Almost three galleons for a box, Lily thought, but she shrugged and paid up. He put it into a bag for her and waved her from the shop. She waved back and started walking down the street back towards Hogwarts. As she walked, she thought about what she had just done. She'd paid nearly three galleons for a magical box. She had seriously considered size, colors, and security options. She'd even had James's name put on it in silver lettering. Walking down the street, carrying Christmas presents and her very expensive box, Lily Evans burst into hysterical laughter and could not stop for nearly five straight minutes. The end of chapter two. Um, but, but three galleons... That's like a $15 box. Yeah, it's not that bad. Especially one that has anti-theft, like, color changing. Yeah, uh, I think that's pretty sweet. It's a pretty cool box. It's a wicked cool box. All right, any final thoughts other than boxes? No, I want a magic box, though. Same. I would have done the, um, put anything in it. Bottomless? Yes, thank you. Same. I see, I would have done bottomless and shrinking and expanding. Well, if it's bottomless, do you really need shrinking and expanding? Well, I guess, yeah. I'd want it to be able to shrink. I don't necessarily need the expanding portion of it because it's bottomless. But I guess I would want it to be wide enough to put my the items in. Because if it's like bottomless and expanding and you expanded it to really wide and then you put something real tall inside it, like you could mm-hmm. just like put a couch in there. Yep. Turn a couch on its side and go bloop. And then you could shrink it and put it in your pocket. Yeah. Or leave it on the counter and go, "Mm, it'll return back to its proper place in a day. Mm Mm-hmm. 
I would also want it to be like weightless and. Oh yeah, weightless a hundred percent. Yep. Definitely. So we would have paid a lot more for our boxes. Oh yeah, definitely not musical though. I'm good no. with that. Mm-mm. But if I was giving it to James, I would have made it sing a really, really, really stupid song. Oh yeah, hundred percent. All right, so I guess we had a lot more to say about boxes. We're very passionate about milk duds and magical boxes. Apparently. Last week it was... Lily's parents. And essay writing. Yep, essay writing. Before that it was bagels. Mm Mm-hmm. Well, we're really getting on random topics. We're passionate about a lot of things. We really are. We're passionate people. We're passionate about a lot of things. Life... Yep. In general. All right, come back next week to see what random thing we're passionate about next week. Yay! Woo! Thank you so much for joining us on our journey through the trap door. Please leave us a review on Facebook or iTunes. It would literally mean the world to us. It really would. Uh, you can find us on Facebook and Instagram at Through the Trap Door 16 or on Twitter at The Trap Door. And please send us an email at throughthetrapdoor16 at gmail.com with any story suggestions. And as always, join us again next Saturday as we travel through the trapdoor.